Well, the Bitcoin roller coaster ride continues. Bitcoin plunged today nearly 20% from its all time high of 58,000 bucks that occurred on Sunday. Last week, Bitcoin hit a trillion dollars in market value for the first time. That's a big deal. And I guess the slide follows an attack from Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen that Bitcoin is, quote, an extremely inefficient way to conduct transactions. She had some other choice words, too. Uh, let's bring in our expert. Cryptocurrency, by the way, is here to stay. That's my view. It's here to stay. I don't care. The government's going to hate it. David Bonson, founding and managing partner of the Bonson Group. Uh, I've been advising them. Please to continue to do so. So, David, I... It's not that I don't care what the Treasury Secretary says on this subject, but actually I don't care what the Treasury says on this subject. Bitcoin is here to stay. You know it and I know it. We may not like it. We may not cherish it. We may not even buy it, but it is here to stay. You know that. Well, it certainly is. I think the, the dif difference people have to make is, is understanding Bitcoin as a medium of exchange versus the price that one is paying for a Bitcoin. And I think that when you see this kind of high volatility, I mean, have you ever said it was down 20 percent from its high of two days ago? You know, and we're talking about this stable medium of exchange to substitute the U.S. dollar. So really, whether it's an Elon Musk tweet or a, a press conference comment from Secretary Yellen, something cannot be that vulnerable and be considered a stable medium of exchange. But they are going to work through it. I mean, you're look, not even the U.S. dollar is that volatile in the short run, although the dollar has had its moments of crashing down for a period of time. But everybody's talking about it. Cryptocurrencies in general, Bitcoin is perhaps the best known for a variety of reasons. The technology needs improvement, right? The blockchain uh, uh, ledgers need improvement. The transactions in this needs improvement. But the Fed and the Treasury will probably fight it, but they're going to lose. And this is a kind of libertarian populist thing, David. Folks want this because they don't trust the government. Yeah, that's the interesting thing is there's sort of a push-pull here. The more that the quote-unquote establishment fights it, the more that camp sociologically ends up liking it. But then on the other hand, we're told that more mainstream use of it, here, you know, the idea that PayPal wants to use it or that Elon Musk is, is putting Tesla cash into it, that that's supposed to be an argument for it. So it's kind of uh, in this tug of war between being accepted in the mainstream or being that kind of libertarian sort of iconoclastic thing. And ultimately, I just don't see why that pushes the price up higher. The fact that there will be greater use of cryptocurrency as a medium of exchange as blockchain technology continues to evolve, which is your point, Larry, I totally agree with. You know, but would I be speculating on the price of what a Bitcoin would be? It could be 100000 and it could be 10000 and it could be both in the next month. And so that's why it's not investable for us. But I certainly agree with you. It's here to stay. Well, you know, years ago when this first came up, some of the pioneers, like my pal Brian Kelly and others, I said, why don't you guys back it by gold or a commodity basket? It would have terrific currency value. You know, right now it's principally a, an investment play. It's an investment store. And, you know, you take your chances. You go up 20 percent, you go down. It doesn't have what Art Laffer calls the moneyness of money. It's not really a reliable medium of exchange because of its volatility. But if you backed it by something, unlike some other fiat paper currencies I could think of, then maybe it would be very reliable. Think about that. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great point. Of course, the same thing could be said about the other fiat currencies that you referred to as well. Um, the, the camp of those of us who believe in something called sound money seems to be growing thinner by the day. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> that is true. Um, so Jay Powell testified today, easy money, right? That's what you heard. Easy money, easy money, easy money. And therefore, stocks did rebound, and therefore, we can't fight the Fed because interest rates will be zero probably for the rest of my lifetime. So is that bullish in your judgment? 
Well, I am surprised that the markets would have rebounded as if he said anything we didn't already know. I mean, that they're going to stay at the zero bound for several more years is a foregone conclusion. That this QE continues is a foregone conclusion. He said something in the pre-prepared comments, Larry. I'm not sure if you saw it, but it was just stunning to read that he said we want to get to 2% inflation and we want to get to that where we believe it will be sustainable much higher than that for a prolonged period of time. Mm. So this idea that they want to kind of smooth out to a higher inflation, that basically gives them all the flexibility they could ever hope for to stay at the zero bound in perpetuity. Now, that, there's arguments for and against all the different things they're doing, but my point it, is the idea that anyone believes this will not be somewhat distortive to asset prices well, at some point in time, if it hasn't been already, I just find that completely but, impossible but to you, believe. But you can't fight the Fed. And I, I say this in all seriousness, okay? I'm not mocking you. I'm serious. I, I don't think the Fed really knows the causes of inflation. No matter what the Fed wants with higher inflation or maybe someday lower inflation, I don't think they have the foggiest idea how to do it. All the models have broken down, right? Phillips curve monetarism. I myself just follow the value of the dollar. Dollar plunges another 10 percent, we'll get a jump inflation. If it doesn't, then I think this little inflationary pickup comes to nothing. The little bit of bump up, 35 basis points in interest rates, David, I wouldn't sell the market because of the 10-year went up 35 basis points. Oh, no, of course not. The idea that 135 basis point 10 year mm. is somehow detrimental to stocks versus 100 is silly. But, Larry, let me just real quickly reminisce about real something quick. that ties into what you're real talking quick. about right now. The only time for all the years we've been friends and the thousands of times you've been on TV and hundreds of times I've been on TV, the only time we were ever on TV together down on the floor of the stock exchange at the other network and you started talking about the Phillips curve and how it was dead and gone forever mm. and that was when the Fed was wanting to raise interest rates because they were worried about inflation mm. and I almost started crying on set and applauding because I was so <laughs> excited to hear you making this case. I Here we are now on TV. TV together and it's the exact opposite story. They're now talking about how well we're worried about inflation, uh, we're not worried about inflation and, and we think that we can have low interest rates in perpetuity. You're exactly right. It's not that what they're doing is right or wrong, it's that investors and savers cannot possibly believe that they know. Right. They that's the key point. And, and I and make that's this the to number our one friends. Thing we have to take away from not, it. They're not just kind the, of having to make it up as they go along, not, and that's the sort of reality that we're in right not now. Not just the Wall Street investors. I'm talking about Main Street people in the Midwest. I'm talking yeah. about blue collar workers right. who are actually doing very well yeah. in this economy. Uh, the really great news for them is that the Fed has no idea what causes inflation, and it won't happen as long as we keep the currency sound. More to be revealed, David Bonson. I appreciate it very much. I do believe the Phillips curve trade-off between more people working in inflation is dead.